Live from Seattle, Washington at the MVP Summit. This is the Microsoft Power Platform Community Call for April 2023. Today is April 19th. I'm David Warner and so excited to have everybody joining us. We've got amazing buzz around the amazing things that are coming out. Did I say amazing? I did because it's amazing. Let's take a look at our agenda for today. Uh, we're going to get the latest updates and news on Power Platform. We are going to have a picture time together. Then we're going to have community call conversation opportunities. And we're going to have our amazing demos with Keith today. He's going to have with great power apps comes great reusability. And then Shane, the one and only Shane, we don't say his last name, right? Because it's Shane. Copilot is the coworker you never knew you always needed. So we are looking forward to that. First things first, let's talk about how you can present on this call. This is your community call. We want you to feel welcome and able to present a demo on this community call. Everyone's welcome. Don't worry, everyone. It doesn't need to be some astounding, amazing thing that no one has ever shown. You have your own voice. You have your own way to share that. We want you to share it. We made it easy for you. In fact, all you need to do is fill out this simple request form, ak.ms slash community slash request slash demo, and we will absolutely ensure that you're set into the lineup. We have a couple of community calls for you to present on. It can be the M365 and Power Platform dev call or this Power Platform monthly call. You're welcome to contribute or present on either or. So please don't hesitate to reach out. If you have any questions, also reach out. We'd love to co-present. We'd love to set you up with a buddy if that's what you would like, but it's your community call and we want you to feel welcome to do that. All right. Now, let's move over to the Power Platform News Desk. And for that, we're going to hand it over to April Dunham. Thanks, David. So we have a lot of news uh, to cover. So obviously, we can't talk about Power Platform lately without talking about Copilot. So we have some new uh, news and uh, documentation here on the how to use natural language Copilot inside of Power Apps, which I'm sure you'll be hearing more about here later on. Also, modern controls. That was another big thing that was released recently in Canvas applications. So you can have a nice, fluent, modern feel in your Power Apps. We have some documentation on that as well. Comments and model-driven apps, uh, modern refresh look for model-driven apps apps, controls, properties, and power apps cards, and deletion of inactive Microsoft Dataverse or Teams environments. All new news and articles that you can check out um, and recent things that were added. Awesome. Let's talk about some samples. Yes, and samples. We have a new Power Apps Canvas app sample here from Angelo, uh, employee engagement survey. Um, this is a great use case of the modern controls inside of Power Apps. So how you how they look and how you can use them inside of a Canvas application, um, and, and and all the stuff there for kind of a, a survey type application in Canvas apps. So really great sample from Angelo there. If you have your samples to share, you can go to aka.ms forward slash Power Platform dash samples. Awesome. Thank you, April. Excellent job, Angelo. And thank you for everyone that's submitting those samples. It is absolutely available for any one of you to put samples in. We want you to put your samples in. So if you have any questions on how to do that, don't hesitate to reach out. We'll talk more about an opportunity coming up soon as well. Next, let's go to Jocelyn, who's in the room live on Connectors. Yes, I just stuck in. I'm not sure if you guys saw it because we came straight from the labs call. If you guys are wondering what the labs call is, Go ahead and scan that QR code. This is a once a month call that I host all about connectors and other tangential power platform related topics. So if you can't get enough connectors, catch me there. We are now at 997 total certified connectors across the power platform ecosystem. This includes Power Automate, Power Apps, and Azure Logic Apps. These are the immediately out of the box usable ones, not just custom connectors, the ones that can be adopted at any point. And I'd like to call out some awesome new ones that we have certified in the last month, which include Microsoft Search, another OpenAI GPT specific connector, as well as Cisco WebEx and WhatsApp, which was actually made both by a student group from University College London, who just had the opportunity to demo with me at my last event. So keep an eye out on YouTube for that. As always, we need your help with more connectors. 997 is not enough. We have some awesome asks, so please feel free to check out our GitHub if you want to know what connector you can make. Links will be in the chat. Thank you all so much for your contributions. Awesome. Thanks, Josh. So close to 1,000. So close. I hear we'll get a set of steak knives when we do. That's scary, but oh, I'm well, here for it. I'll, I'll <laughs> give a set of steak knives. Awesome. We can't wait. Very, very good. Okay. Now, we had talked about opportunities for you to contribute. Sometimes that landscape can be a little scary. So let's throw it over to Hugo to talk about sharing is caring. Wonderful. Thank you, David. So if you are interested in speaking in public or contributing to some of our open source initiatives or 
writing blogs or things like that, hey, we have ways to share with you how to get started. Because let's face it, it can be scary, right? When we start talking about GitHub, GitHub sounds so scary. And we have the Power Platform Samples uh, Gallery, which is actually running on GitHub. So how do we use GitHub in a low-code, no-code environment? Well, that's what we can help you with, uh, with getting started. So join us for any of our upcoming Sharing is Gang sessions. My favorite one is the Power Platform Sample Contributor, and we'll show you how to contribute your samples, Power Platform samples, and uh, they'll be available on adoption on Microsoft.com. Now, these sessions are always not recorded, always free, always fun, and everyone can ask questions. It's a safe space. Don't worry, we won't make fun of you. You're allowed to make fun of us, though, right? Sure. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Absolutely. We make fun of ourselves. Yeah, that's right. Once you have contributed to the community uh, through these awesome guidance sessions, there's something else that happens. There is. But first, are we looking for help on these sessions? Oh, that's right. We are looking for help. I know. It's like this is a bad infomercial. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I could cut through the can tan, can, tin can can. I could cut, cut through the can with this knife. So we are actually looking for help to do sharing is caring because we we want to we really want to expand our reach. Uh, we're looking for volunteers to help giving the sessions. The sharing is caring sessions will help you uh, provide the material and everything. But we need help with running sessions all over the world and make sure that everyone feels welcome and feels they have the opportunity to contribute. Yes, so reach out folks. If you would like to help out, help administer some of these, please don't hesitate. We would love, love, love the help. Now, Hugo, talking about that recognition, what was that? I don't know if I want to talk about it anymore, oh. David. Uh, so the recognition program is actually something that we have worked with Credly. Credly is the same organization that will give you badges when you get certified with Microsoft certification. So what we do is we actually give you badges for doing cool things in the community. If you're, you know, you're doing contributions, you're contributing to open source, you're giving demos, you're speaking, all these things, including creating cool connectors, yeah, by the way, <laughs> you will get a badge. And this is free to you. All you need to do is you need to tell us, you know, your email address and your GitHub account. And it's as long as you're creating a contribution that is uh, recognized by our community recognition program, you will get a badge. And then you can show it to your friend. You can put it on your resume. Uh, you can, you know, print it out and put it on your car and drive around town and have people be impressed about all the cool things you're doing. So sign up at aknms slash community slash recognition. Absolutely. Thank you, Hugo. All right. Let's talk about some shows and events. I'm going to turn it back over to April to talk a little bit about the Low Code Revolution show. Yeah, that's right. We have been busy here at the Low Code Revolution show. We have a ton of new episodes since we last spoke. Uh, David Abu, our Power BI advocate, has a few new episodes on how to integrate Jupyter Notebooks with Power BI and Power BI Quick Reports feature in model-driven Power Apps. Daniel Laskowitz is continuing his CLI Expose series with an episode on pipelines, also doing a security deep dive. And I just did an episode um, with Cedric about AI principles for Power Platform developers. So you make sure that you're using all of these cool new co-pilots and AI tools responsibly. So lots of great new episodes. If you want to be a guest, if you have something cool that you want to highlight, we have a link right there, aka to MS4 slash Low Code Revolution guest. Sign up to be on the show. Awesome. Thank you, April. We got lots of other events coming up here in the world of Power Platform, one of which is the European Power Platform Conference in Dublin in June. Uh, and you can get early bird tickets now. So doi doi, you want to fly on over? <laughs> and that was my impression. I don't have the sound effects today, folks, so I'm having to make it up, right? <laughs> chirp, chirp. So <laughs> take no. advantage of this, absolutely. We also have European Collaboration Summit coming up, and in fact, you can get into this as well. Power Platform Rocks is a voucher that will get you 15% off, so definitely don't hesitate to take advantage of that. We've got our Educon series coming up in DC, Seattle, and Chicago, saving you 25% if you use the promo code COMMUNITY, because we all love it, woo woo, right, community. And we've got a number of other awesome shows coming up around the world user group meetups, summits, boot camps, collab days, 
definitely take advantage. You can see these and other events at ak.ms slash community days. And if you are running an event, don't hesitate to put your event in that site. You can do that absolutely free. ak.ms slash community days will give you access. So check it out, everybody. All right, what time is it? Click, 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 click. I don't know the sound effects, so I did it. <laughs> Picture time. Oh, gosh. All right. Yeah. You, you love it or you hate it, right? So uh, no, just get in line yeah, uh, behind my yeah, computer. Come over in the change. So, yeah. All right. I'm going to move it into the screen here. I'm excited right now. <laughs> Everybody's going to try to be a small. There we go. Everybody's all right. We are going to record this and extract it for everyone later. Not so awkward at all. Turn those. <laughs> Turn those cameras on. Got a few more seats if everybody wants to turn it on. Not here, there. All right, all right. A few more filling in. Excellent. Look at that. All right. Let's start waving, everybody. Wave, wave, wave. <laughs> Show the community how awesome you all are. We appreciate all that you're doing. You Not rock. Not at all. <laughs> yep. I wish Vessa was here. Awesome. Take a photo from. All right. You didn't say we're we, done. Are we done? Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah, we're we okay. Done? All right. Remember, we're, <laughs> yeah. Now remember, we're a live mic though. Everybody. Okay. All right. So what time is it then? It is moving to demo time. So up first is Keith Atherton with great power apps comes great reusability. Keith, take it on over, my man. Lovely. Thank you, David. I'll just go ahead and share the slides. Great, okay, well, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to my presentation. With great power apps comes great reusability. Uh, thank you, David and Hugo, for the opportunity to speak today and thanks everyone for your time. So a bit about me, I'm Keith Atherton. I've been a software developer and solutions architect for over 20 years. Um, I've moved around the UK and USA, but I'm now based in Edinburgh in Scotland. Um, I'm gonna cover a lot of things on this uh, presentation. So if anyone's got any questions, just feel free to reach out to me afterwards. I'm always happy to help. Okay, so what we're gonna cover are the benefits of reuse, some user interface and code reuse options, and upcoming features and where to find out about them. So as you could probably tell, there's a bit of a theme to this session, but the way I got started with Power Apps is I was actually connected with someone who'd created an app. They worked in marketing. Uh, they created a really good app, uh, but they weren't a developer. So they just piece things together as a citizen maker, if you will. Um, and I was brought on board to add a code behind and make things a bit more functional. Now, one of the screens they created looked a bit like this. It was a big screen, about 50 buttons, and they'd been laid out in like a grid style. It was really good, but they'd all been created individually and also laid out individually. So every time this person had to go back and change the text size or a color or a font, you can imagine how much fun that was for them. So when I was brought on board, <laughs> the intention was ideally, you know, can I help with this? Can I help make things more efficient or offer any suggestions? Again, the app was great. There was just a few opportunities here and there. So I'll come on to what we did to solve that problem in a moment. So to cover benefits of reuse, uh, we've got the concept in software engineering and many other fields of don't repeat yourself or dry. You can have faster development by reusing things. You can have a consistent user interface and consistent code behavior. You've also got reliability. So if you've got components that have been fully tested, you know, using them in a new screen or a new app, you're going to be confident using them. They've, they've you know, they've been checked over. And there's a lot to be said for building a library of reusable components that you and the rest of the organization can use for future projects as well. All righty, so let's look at some user interface options. So many of us are familiar with galleries, and in this case, that's what we use for the uh, the button uh, scenario that we had before with that very busy screen. And this is a way you can just have uh, controls that are repeated again and again. If you point to a data source or a collection, uh, you can even nest galleries within each other to make them more sophisticated if we need to. Um, and we've got some good starting point templates based on lists and galleries as well that can just give us the great starting point that you can then modify. So the examples at the top of the screen screen there for accounts and company names. These are quite common when you point it to a table containing business data. But if you've got a, a menu system or a ribbon control with buttons, anything that needs repeated, uh, you know, there is potential for using a gallery control for it. 
When many of us think of reusability, uh, Canvas components are very popular. So for example, the menu system, just uh, what we were talking about there with home, admin and so on. Um, if that was something we wanted within an app on multiple screens, a component is a very good option to do that. That way, if we do change that component, it's reflected in all the instances that are used. Um, and the great thing with components, you can actually customize them and enhance them by using input and output properties to send data to the component or retrieve it from the component. And you've got behavior formulas which are experimental, but a way of almost like raising the events like on select. So if you had a component that was uh, a modal dialog box or a yes, no button, you could actually flag that within the app and put some custom uh, power effects code behind that to customize it each time. And if to take components further as well, if we do want the same components used on multiple apps, uh, there's the concept of component libraries as well. So you can share these components across multiple apps. Again, any future apps can benefit from them as well. Okay, talking of the UI, we can group elements together, such as the example here with group one, with three controls actually nested within. Uh, groups are, are good, they're a good way to kind of uh, logically group things together, but it's not a control within itself and it doesn't affect the layout of the app. But something that may be more preferable is the container control. Uh, now, this is another way of grouping controls together. We can see the example there with a left container and a right container. Um, now, this is its own control and does have its own properties. So you can toggle visible on and off. Uh, you can set X, Y, position, width, height, so on. But the added benefits with this, with containers, um, it is useful for screen reader users. So this actually explains logically the layout of the app very very useful for accessibility and also keyboard users who tab through controls as well uh, containers add that extra uh, benefit there and probably the most basic is good old copy and paste so we can duplicate elements things like screens and components and many other things you can copy and paste as well um, and even apps if you need to copy an app and have something that looks very similar you can clone it by using save as give the app a different name and then you've got that good starting point then you can make modifications and talking of reusability as well there's a way of making apps uh, reusable across different layouts and different screens and devices and something uh, can be used called responsive web design which is quite popular with web development um, and this is a way you know you can see the example the illustration rather there you know laptops mobiles other sizes form factors uh, you can reuse that same app by realigning and resizing things within a site and we can do that with power apps too and we've got these responsive layouts to help us get started which is often just a collection of containers in this case you can see things like split screens and sidebars and so on and you can modify these and make your own but if you need to take it further, you can also do a, a dynamic layout. So in this example on the left, we've got, say, a portrait orientation and a landscape one on the right. Let's say if it was an app intended for mobile and you was turning turning the device, but you wanted to use that full screen real estate, then it is possible if you divide up the screen, you can use some formulas to actually realign the different components. So that, could, again, depends on the use case, but it could be useful. So I used to work with in construction. Some people use ruggedized tablets out in the field. Others were desk users or managers using mobile phones on the, on the go. This was a very, very useful solution. And there's a really good article on Microsoft Learn on how to do this. Another good approach in terms of UI is reusing customized controls. So we all know, uh, well, many of us know the out of the box controls in Power Apps. We know them, we love them, but often we might want some extra branding. We might want our own uh, organization's colors, a certain look and feel, certain font families or font sizes for accessibility. So instead of using the out of the box ones on screens again and again. There's a really good article on uh, Matthew Devaney's blog actually about the concept of a hidden template screen. Uh, this is the screen that the user won't see, but you can actually get these out of the box controls, make all your customizations. And then when you do create user visible screens, you can actually copy and paste or refer to these template controls. That way you're not having to make the customizations again and again. And Sancho Harker, who does a lot of great work, has created a free branding template app, which is along these lines to help you get started with these customized controls. OK, let's look at some code reuse options. 
So quite popular in programming is the concept of constants. In this case, it's just global variables, but a way of actually having a single source of truth at the very head of the app. So in this case, say app on start, if you set these values, and you refer to the variables in the other screens, the other properties throughout the app, we're not actually having the hard coded values. It means that if ever you go back and say, well, I want that health bonus to change from 10 to 20, you just change it once and all of the instances that refer to it then get the benefit of that change. You're not having to hunt through uh, all of the code to find those hard coded values. So it's simple, but it can be effective. Along those lines too, we've got named formulas, which is currently experimental. And this is in uh, app and the formulas property. And we can see some code there as an example, things like setting user email, user info. Uh, you can set hard coded values here too. But the difference with this is that these values are immutable. You can't change this definition anywhere else in the app. Uh, and there's also the benefit of a deferred calculation. So it's only within the app on a screen when you actually refer to these named formulas does the calculation take place. It's not when the app loads. So again, can be very valuable. And if you need something that's set, again, uh, a constant, if you will, set across the entire environment, uh, we can use environment variables as well. Now, these can be used in Canvas apps as well as flows. So there's a bit more reusability there. And the example there, I've actually used a Power BI report URL. So instead of actually hard coding this in the app, in the Power BI tile within the app, actually setting it at this environment variable level, uh, which you can do through the Power Apps portal, you could just add it to a solution. You can refer to it once or many times within the apps that you've got, and you can always change it in the portal and it gets reflected in the app. So again, depending on the use case can be very, very useful. And also we've got PCFs. So this one's a bit more of a pro developer or a code first approach, but if you need some bespoke behavior or something very niche in this example in the PCF gallery, which are actually publicly shared from the community, we've got things like postcode validation or very specific look and feel to certain controls. So again, that's another great option if you need it. All right, so let's have a quick look at some upcoming features and where we can find them. So we mentioned responsive pages uh, upcoming is some drag and drop features to that to make things a lot more easy to use. We're looking at a public preview in July this year, going GA in September, currently scheduled for that. Also with responsive layouts, again, this is when you want it to be a different form factor or different resolution. Uh, you can currently do that just in a web browser. Many of them have developer tools such as Chrome Dev Tools. Um, but this is being brought into Power App Studio. So there's a device preview feature, which we can see illustrated there. And this was recently announced on uh, April 4th at the uh, BizApps launch event. So yeah, very, very convenient having that feature. Very good. And improving the uh, code uh, as well with PowerFX is user-defined functions or UDFs, which are quite popular in other programming languages too. So it's a way of breaking formulas down into smaller parts, making them recursive, like in the example right here, which for many developers like me, uh, you know, can have many benefits if you need that uh, use case. And we're looking at a public preview in June this year for that one. And in terms of looking out for new features coming up, we've got the release planner. It's actually the combined Dynamics 365 and Microsoft Power Platform release planner. But this is really cool. You can see when things are going GA, uh, going to public preview. You can even set your own release plans and share them with others as well. So this has really improved uh, in recent times. It's very, very useful. And also the Power Platform blog, many of us might know about this one and the individual product blog, blogs as well. Uh, lots of new announcements go there. It's always good to look for new features. So I would highly recommend checking those. And last but not least, go into community events, you know, like meeting these wonderful dragons. Uh, I think the names were Dave, David and Hugo, I think their names were. Anyway, I met these great guys at the uh, Power Platform Conference in Orlando last year. And uh, yeah, everyone's always happy to share knowledge and help each other. So yeah, woo woo. Right, so we've reached the end. So we've covered the benefits of reuse very, very quickly, uh, UI and code reuse options and upcoming features and where we can find them. And again, I know I flew through that. So if anyone's got questions, just feel free to reach out to me after this session. But apart from that, thank you very much for your time. Awesome, 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 Keith. There's a wealth of information there. Lots of links are in the chat, everybody. We'll also have the, the video recording 
uh, along with those links available in the show notes and all of the above. I'll also have them in my screenshot summary later today. So, or when you're watching this, I guess it'll be yesterday, the day before, right? I'm not, Great, I, Scott. I, I can't do the math. Great, Scott. In the fullness of time? Yes, absolutely. We will Perfect. give you all the information everywhere. <laughs> all right, thank you, Keith, well done. Appreciate you. all your time. So next up is going to be Shane Young. Co-pilot is the co-worker you never knew you always needed. Take it away. Oh, I'm nervous. All right, let's share my screen. Let's see what embarrassing things happen when I share my screen. Right, like, like David, I'm used to having a um, multiple monitors, you know, controlling what's going on. I got it all on my little Surface book here, so bad things will probably happen. <laughs> um, anyway, so if we haven't met before, uh, my name is Shane Young. I am the guy who talks a whole bunch on the internet about uh, this lovely Power Platform stuff. So there's all my fancy contact information if you need any of that. Definitely just check out my YouTube channel. It's always my favorite place. And then, of course, we've got Chewy down there in the bottom corner and then Buddy over on the side. So we started remodeling our bathroom this week, and um, you know we kind of cleared everything out before the contractors showed up. And literally three seconds later, Buddy jumps up on the counter. He's never been on a counter in his life. He just jumped up there, you know, barked at the dog in the mirror for a while, and then decided that that dog was okay. And yeah, he, he spent an hour that evening just sitting on the counter. So I guess the uh, the Bernie's mountain dog in him felt like counters are mountains. I don't know. So anyway, no one cares, right? But Buddy's fine. Okay, so what we want to talk about today is Copilot. I don't have any fancy slides. I did not do a uh, Batman motif because, well, I'm just not that talented. So, uh, you know, Keith, uh, making me look bad. Thanks for that, Keith. But uh, what I want to do is kind of talk to you guys, walk you through, you know, Copilot, talk about AI in general. And I think one of the things to keep in mind, you know, is or one of the neat things, I, like I woke up this morning at 5 a.m. to be here, uh, but uh, Copilot uh, is starting to roll out to uh, different people, right? So I've seen some people tweeting about it. Uh, so if you haven't done it already, make sure you go out there and sign up for the preview for Copilot. Um, you know, they're starting to pick people off that list and roll it out. So instead of demoing my usual um, super top secret tenant, we're going to demo in my live tenant. So what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> right? Like I literally got it like an hour ago. So why wouldn't I demo it from here, right? I'm an idiot. It's okay. All right. So if you haven't seen Copilot before, this is that idea of, you know, helping me be a better developer, right? Like, you know, don't think of this as the enemy. Think of this as a way to make you that 10x developer or the 1,000x developer or whatever the trendy thing is to be these days. But the idea here is that, like, when I'm on the home screen of Power Apps, you can see at the top, welcome, Shane. I mean, I already feel better about it. But it's like, hey, describe what your app should do. So let's hop right here. What do we want to do? I think we want to do something like I want or how about I'm always polite. So please make me an app to track. Um, what do you guys want to do? Let's do let's do football cards. Football cards. Right? I know it's a very business critical scenario for most of us, but you know, I find if I make these too business specific, then you guys can't bridge the gaps. So if I make it completely business irrelevant, then you you know you can make fun of me and bridge that gap. But here you can see I typed in that simple sentence. It is thinking. And look at that. Just like that, moments later, we it has created me an app. But, but not really, right? It hasn't actually created the app yet. If you look in the bottom right corner, you see a big create app button. So what it's done is it's made a table of fields that I might want to track in a football card app. So kind of cool, right? And the idea here, right, you can see we got, so we got car ID, card name, the team, the year, the condition, the price. So it has put fields of data in there for me, just like that. Um, and so the idea is this table doesn't exist yet, though. What they've done is they've said, hey, based on what you asked, here's an idea of what a table is. But now we're going to use words to shape it. So, for example, maybe I'm like, you know, one of my uh, favorite players isn't in there, right? So let's try this. Please add a row of sample data for, um, I said favorite player, and I don't really have a favorite player, so I got to make up one. Boomer Esiason, right? He was a Bengal. I am a Bengals fan. Esiason, can I spell it right? That's uh, probably not spelled right. We'll press it. We'll see what happens. It thinks about it. It's probably laughing at me right now. 
still laughing at me. T. There you go. So it figured it out, right? Cincinnati Bengals, very good. 1988 sounds like a good time. Condition was only good. His career was only good. I think it even spell corrected his name. It did. It did. Yeah. It's, it's it's really smart, right? There's a great story about how I did uh, dog breads instead of dog breeds one time. So, you know, things happen. But there you go. So it added sample data. So obviously adding sample data about football cards, like who cares? But like when I've used this in more customer facing scenarios, I've had it add sample data that made sense in the scenario. So like we'll see later, I'll probably show you an app where we did um, sample FAQ questions and they were real FAQ questions that a, a business in the scenario I gave it would ask. So very helpful. So there you go. So we can have it add sample data. Now, what if I look at this and said, you know, all right, so condition, as you can see, by looking right here, that is a choice field. So maybe you're curious what choices it has. So what are the choices for the condition column? We can ask. And look, it says, hey, there they are. What if we wanted to have one for um, fire damage? Please add a condition for fire damage. I don't know why I went so dark, but I did. <laughs> or I can't spell damage. Please add a condition for fire damage. All right, and so there, sorry, I cannot help with this question. So this happens, right? So one of the things that with that is important to understand about this copilot, or I guess all the copilot built in the Power Apps, is it's not like they just said, oh yeah, let's insert ChatGPT into this thing, right? Like, yeah, I know that if you've used ChatGPT, you're probably like, all right, that's all it is. It's not though. They've they've taken a foundation and they've added their own logic. So they've added their own dataverse specific things. They've also added their own controls, right? I shouldn't be trying to use this copilot to do other things, right? It is really just here focused on helping me create this table right now in this app. So keep that in mind. Sometimes you ask a question like that, you might you might ask it in a way that it doesn't understand. It's trying to protect you from, you know, doing something silly. So, you know, you you sometimes kind of have to dance with it. Now, if you also want to look at condition, keep in mind most of these columns, you can click on them and say view column. And so then look, there it is showing me those same choices as well. So interesting, right? It, it's a good UI for doing this. So that's condition, year, price. You know, we could kind of continue to mess with this. Now, maybe you're looking at your data here and you're like, yeah, you know, I don't know if that's really all the things, right? We could say, what are some suggestions to improve my table? What is it going to do? It should go through, it's going to analyze now, and you can see it's like, hey, you could add more columns, like so player position, card manufacturer, card number, you could add more sample data, you do all types of things. Now, let's see if this is going to work. So let's just try this. Let's say, I like your idea. I like your idea. Please add the first one. Let's see what it does. All right, so it's like I have no idea what you mean by the first one. Fair enough. So then we'll just say, uh, please add. Eh, I got to click in there. Please add a column to my table for player position. Yeah. Right, and then it'll hopefully uh, get the capitalization right. It's chugging and. Do -do -do. All right. Now, notice it didn't blink. Like, that's not the team's call. It doesn't, you don't really realize it happens. You just have to scroll to the right. And then there is our position. And you notice that Boomer size and was a quarterback, and it's gotten the data right. So, pretty nice. Also, notice it left out the word position it, or left out the word player. It, you know, it doesn't just literally do what you say, it will put some thought into doing it correctly, just the same way that it spelled Esaias incorrectly. Um, I'm really should probably be embarrassed. I misspelled a slice, but not. <laughs> now, as you're going through this, you know you can add these columns. And I guess let's let's have a little sidetrack for a second. So one of the things that I think is really interesting slash different slash sometimes hard about tools like Copilot or ChatGPT or Bing Chat or whatever AI tool you're using, you know the early versions of AI were. Um, very, you know, kind of like, hey, if someone asks this question, 
figure out their answer and then just kind of insert it in here. Like it was almost like a macro and word, like it was just kind of filling in blanks. You know, with these tools, that is not the case. What they are doing is they are taking your question in real time. They're analyzing your question, coming up with the appropriate answer, and then in real time, doing the, the, the correct thing based on its understanding of that particular question, right? It's not just taking canned questions. And so to that end, you know, you're going to see that when you're using these tools, you're going to get a different behavior every time. You know, when, last time I built the, uh, the football card app, you know, some of these things that I'm asking it right now, they behave differently, right? Both times it was right, right? There can be more than one right answer, but, you know, the context can, can change. So, so, you know, don't ask it to do something and then be like, oh, it said no. Well, that stinks. It must not be any good. I'm going to move on, right? Ask it a different way. Ask it to, you know, put a different spin on it or come back to it or, you know, or feed it more information. Um, you know, the more context that you give these tools, the better the answers are you're going to get, right? David and I were having this conversation this morning when we were talking about, you know, prompting these things. You know, the when you first start, you're like, make me a column that does blah. And, you know, you go super simple. But the more you start to prompt it and say, give it the context. Hey, do this thing based on these parameters, thinking about it from this point of view with this person's tone in mind. Like, you can start to really prompt these things to, to help get a better place. All right, that was my little sidetrack here. But I always feel bad when I do these demos because, you know, you're like, why is this guy asking to do things that don't work? Well, because last time I asked it to do it, it did that thing, right? Or, you know, you're going to have a slightly different experience. Now, if you're trying to, you know, best figure out what to ask it, if you look up here in the top, this literally just rolled out today, hit the little drop down here. And so it will give you some ideas, right? So here are things that it's good at. Add columns, add rows, remove columns, remove rows change a column, change the data type, refresh the data, give me suggestions, right? So these are all great places to start if you're struggling with what do I do with this thing. Don't, but don't think of these are the only things that you can do with it, but think about these are great places for you to learn. So speaking of that, let's, tr let's try one, right? Let's say, so, oh, look, position, in, oh, I didn't even notice that, right? It surprised me. It may position a choice column without me even asking, but maybe we want, we don't trust that, right? So let's try this. Please change the position column to a text field. I don't know what's going to happen. That's OK. I be brave. Right. And then this is another thing I often tell people, like, what's the worst it's going to do? Tell me no. I mean, it's not going to call my mom and tell her that I asked a dumb question, right? It, it, you, you don't have to be self-conscious about this thing. Look, it did a great job. Maybe we want to give it a thumbs up. Yay, what did you like? It worked. Um, I can tell you that my dear friends uh, in, in Microsoft are doing a great job of, you know, they are very pro feedback right now on this Copilot stuff. So but if you want to be a great contributor, right, if you, when you get this preview, please, every time you ask it something, thumbs up it or thumbs down it, right? Like, you know, if we go back up here where, um, or where do we do it? So I please add a condition for fire damage and it said it couldn't help, right? You know, it should have, yeah, it should have added a choice called fire damage. Or, you know, this is the way that you get it doing the things that you want. Give them this feedback. They, I promise you they are reading every single line of it right now. So. Give them the feedback, tell them what it's doing right, tell them what it's doing wrong, help shape the product. Um, other things that I've done with the data, you know, that, um, you know, all right, let's try this one. So there's already a price column, there is. Um, can you please update the price column to use average retail prices for the cards? Is it going to work? Is it not? I have no idea. But once again, not afraid. Just going to ask it. What's the worst it's going to say? No. And it did. It said I did not. So fair enough. Uh, I can tell you that I've done this type of thing. Uh, like when I did a dog breeds demo. And when I did the dog breeds demo, I said, hey, update it with the average weight of this breed. 
and it went through and updated all of them with the internet data, right? Because once again, this isn't just a little micro version of ChatGPT. It does have internet capabilities. It does have context. And so it was able to do that. You know, apparently football cards is where it draws the line. I don't know. So I don't know if you see in the chat, but I'll just chime in for the purpose of them. Thank you. A uh, couple questions. Yes. Ask you to remove the comma from year. Uh, can you add dollar sign US dollars to the price column? Just some questions. All if you're right. looking for requests no no please send requests it makes david pay attention if nothing else so i'm gonna I, we will try to ask you to remove the comma for the uh the year i bet it doesn't work because that's a dataverse behavior that but we can try right once again what's it gonna do tell me now please remove oh you gotta learn see typing's hard please remove the comma from the year format i doubt it's gonna work but doesn't hurt to try Nope, can't do that, right? And I believe that's just the Dataverse behavior that Dataverse is, uh, you know, it, it doesn't know how to go and change that particular setting of the Dataverse column, right? So there you go, we tried, it didn't work, but that would be something we could change after the fact, right? Because one of the things that you'll see is that these tables are not immutable, right? Look at me with a fancy word. You know, once it creates this table for us in a few minutes, that table's just a regular Dataverse table. So we can still go edit the table, you know, we probably don't have time. Maybe we'll have time, but like sometimes I'll go in and add additional columns because another thing that you might see is like, uh, you know, pretend like uh, Azure here just whispered in my ear. She said, hey, can it add an image column? I don't know, right? So if we try that, see, please add an image column. And so if we ask it to do that, what's going to happen? Well, I can tell you I've asked it a lot of times and it's answered different ways. We're going to see what answer we get. But I'm not going to guess. There we go. While we're waiting, some of the, the other thoughts for the year was potentially ask it to change it to just text, right? Uh, uh, and then, uh, of course, they're talking about the uh, the uh, pricing, uh, trying to add the proper currency value or uh, currency indicator. Okay, yep. So we, okay, so yes, I love the idea of take, changing the text. That's probably what I would do in the real world. Uh, so here you can see it added the image column as a URL. Um, so, but I don't want that. So I would just say, please remove the image column. Um, and then we'll try the currency thing here in a second. Um, we'll, we'll finish the image thing and then we'll come back to that. Um, I doubt it's going to do that one either, but that's okay. While you're waiting for that one question, is is this creating a Canvas or model-driven app, and can it create apps that utilize SharePoint instead of Dataverse? So right now it creates a Canvas app. Um, it would be pretty easy to throw a model-driven app on top of um, the table because it, it is a real Dataverse table. So we can go back and build our own model-driven app off of it. Um, right now it does not have any interactions with SharePoint. I can't speak for the product team. On, what may or may not happen there, but you know, right now it is a it's a dataverse only tool. Okay, so it successfully removed our image column. Now, so the question I would want to ask it now, um, and I did this in the beginning, I had no idea. It's like you know, what types of columns do you support for creating? I might have worded that wrong, but one of the things. Yep, there you go. So one of the things that I don't think people do enough of with these tools is ask the tool, what are you capable of? So here you can see the different types of columns, right? Image and file are not column types that it supports. Well, lookup is not a column type it supports. So I don't have to go try a bunch of columns that I now can see it doesn't use. Okay, so let's do that. And then, so you, oh, sorry, so you said on the price column, um, you know, I guess we're just trying to ask it what currency is the column set to is is the price column set to does that seem like a first question to kind of get us there the price column <laughs> from the department of redundancy department yeah exactly right it's amazing i think was uh was the answer uh in the beginning so in this case i don't think it, as far as i know it does not understand how to any further around the price column. So if we went and looked, I'm guessing after we create it, if we go look, I'm pretty sure it's created in USD. Um, we're not going to be able to change any of those uh, those type of settings today uh, with that column as best I've seen. All right, that, 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 so with column types. Any other? Um, I mean, good? I think that, yeah, just okay. if you're uh, talking about that, you're good. But I think that the point you just made, uh, again, Shane referenced that we were talking about it earlier, 
conversing with Copilot or whatever AI you're working with is very useful. Don't treat it like it's just a machine. Treat it like it's a, a conversational opportunity, right? Asking, do you have context? Do you understand this? Are you familiar with? Uh, are you aware of? Uh, you can give it URLs. Uh, I've seen giving URLs for context. Check out here. Are you familiar with blah, blah, blah from URL, blah, blah, blah? And that helps because then it remembers, it learns along the way. So yeah, great that's... point there. Yeah, yeah. So that was uh, one of, when I did uh, I did a YouTube video on Bing Chat. That was one of the things I did with that one. As I said, hey, go read this Reddit post. I gave it the URL of the post. It read the post, and then I asked it questions about this. You know, conversation was happening in Reddit, and um, you know, and I asked it a very vague question. So basically, in there, that they were talking about a video that I had done, right? And somebody had asked a question, and somebody said, oh, yeah, Shane had done a video on it. But they didn't give a link. They didn't give any more details, a title. I'm like, I don't know what video that was. So I asked Bing Chat to read it. And I was like, what video are they talking about? And it then spit out three videos that were in that context. And sure enough, the first one that it did was absolutely the video. I'm like, right? it knew my content better than I did. I, I just, I was dumbfounded. So, yeah please have harder conversations with these things. Okay, so I think we're good here. Um, one last one here, sometimes this comes up, edit table name. So, um, you know, right now it is football card. I, I can't edit it, but I can see it. Uh, so sometimes what will happen is I practice. I know it never seems like I actually practice, but sometimes I practice. And so if I already had one that I knew was called football card, it would fail on creating. So what I might do here is say, please change the table name to football cards for Azure. All right, there you go. She gets a, now, right, the whole reason she's sitting beside me right now, if you're wondering, is she just wanted to be on uh, the call and she wasn't allowed to be, so this is like her way of professional. <laughs> they let me in, so I'm allowed to be here. Everyone's welcome. So look, so there you go, and I'm totally kidding. I, Azure and I have been having a you know, little spat all week, and so I have the mic right now. So he's upset. Off. I'll, you know what? He needs Snickers. You're not no, when you're hungry. You offered me Chick Fil A. You, you, you not, owe me Chick Fil A. You're not you when you're hungry. Okay. So anyway, you can now see that it changed the uh, the display name. So keep that in mind. That's this pro trick if you start doing the same scenarios over and over again. Okay. So I think we're good. So now what we're going to do in this bottom right is we're going to click on Create App. Now, fingers crossed. We're going to be very hopeful here. Hope the demo gods are with us. And it should finish here in just a moment. But behind the scenes, what it's doing right now is it's creating that table that we just said. And it's you know adding the columns, it's adding the sample data. And then it's going to build us a completely working app to work, interact with that data. Knock on wood. Those desks might not be wood, so it might not have helped. <laughs> And we get dramatic pause here. Come on, please work. I told you guys, these AI demos are uh, always very challenging because you just never know what's going to happen. All right, we have three more seconds. Three, two, one, no. Um, so if it's not going to cooperate, well, let's jump. And I think it is. I, I feel actually better that it's taking a long time. I got a question for you while we're waiting. Yeah. So uh, a lot of fears behind the use of all this AI, yes. right? So is it going to take my job as many of the conversational starters for folks? Oh. Is it a tool or is it something to be feared? Man, you know, that if, if we had a dollar for every time we answer that question, right, we probably wouldn't be here right now. Um, so yeah, that is the best question right now. Is, is this going to take my job, right? I built Power Apps for a career, Shane. Now you're showing me that right now this robot is building it. My number one answer to this, I encourage people to quote me on this when I'm talking to others, is AI is not going to take your job. I'm talking to Hugo, he's not there yet. Um, <laughs> thank you. You look the same thing, right? <laughs> uh, so AI is not going to take your job, but someone using AI is going to take your job, right? So be the person is using the tool. AI is not the enemy. AI is just a tool, to David's point, and you know, just the same way that, you know, Google didn't replace all of our jobs years ago. You know, this whole idea of Copilot or ChatGPT, Bing Chat or Bard. Bard is terrible, by the way. Like, ugh. anyway, none of those are taking your job, but they are making you better at your job. That is, they're your coworker you never knew you needed and you want, right? That's the whole point of this session. 
is that you should be embracing these as someone to help you. How many of you work alone? The only Power Apps person in your environment. Now we've got Copilot to help. People also said that Power Platform was going to steal our jobs too. And here we are creating more jobs, a whole new industry of jobs. Who knew, right? Like It's almost like progress isn't a bad thing. Something like that. I don't know. I, but I mean, you know, if you think about like the wheel of progress at Disney, they stopped, uh, stopped progressing it. So maybe, uh, you know, who knows? Okay. Anyway, so once our lovely little filler there, it has built us an app. Now, if we hit, let's get rid of this co-pilot again, right? And I should have mentioned going into this, there's three different co-pilots we're, we're, we're kind of hitting here. But so if we hit play, something went wrong, okay? So this, uh, like I told you, I just got this version of co-pilot a couple hours ago. This particular one is kicking errors there. No big deal, right? We'll do the Julia Child thing. We'll switch over here to a different demo. And we'll, <laughs> we'll go. Put a different chicken in the oven? I did, right? So now if we just hit uh, play on this one. So this particular co-pilot tool, this one is, I, I, the way I describe it, I'm sure this is not how Microsoft wants me to describe it, but this is ChatGPT for your own data. This is Copilot for the app user. So your end user, right? The Copilot we just did was for makers for us to build the app. This particular Copilot drops me in. And so I've pointed it at the table. In this case, I built an FAQ for a uh, manufacturing company. And so now I can ask questions. These are about my data, right? So, and I could just take one as one. What safety measures do you take in the manufacturing process of your products? Click on it. And it's like, hey, let me think about it. And so right now it's reading my entire Dataverse data set. And then this is the answer from the data set. You know, um, you know what, um, let's see, let's go look at the data. So to look at the data, oh, yeah, that's not the right one. Darn it, all right, let's not look at the data. So we go right back to dog breeds. We're more familiar with dog breeds. So over here, the one we could say, you know, what countries are represented in the data? So if you've ever used ChatGPT and you're like, hey, I really wish I could use ChatGPT to analyze my own internal data, Copilot for app users does exactly that. I point at my Dataverse data, it is pulling in, it is asking, I'm not able to ask it questions. It can analyze, you know, um, if we look at our data set over here, for example, what are the, you know, what is the heaviest dog, right? So you can see there's a weight column. So we could say, what is the heaviest dog? Which, think about it. So how, how does it know? It's a German Shepherd, it's absolutely right. But so it is taking my question, what is the heaviest dog? It's saying, right, heaviest usually equates to weights or you know something like that. Oh, look, he has a weight column and then is analyzing all the data and saying which one has the greatest number and it's the German Shepherds, bingo, bango, it is answer your question. So this is our second co-pilot. This is co-pilot for your users to let it analyze your data. And then of course, the last thing it did was switch back over to the app that we had built. So it also built us a complete app. So over here on the left, we have a gallery, right? These are all our cards. There's our Boomer Sison card. We can click on that. There's Boomer's data. And you know, there's this price. What if our price is a little higher? We can edit the data. And so then now we can change this price from 20 to $205, I don't know. We hit check, Boomer's card just went up. Yes, hope we have one, hope we got a rookie card. And there you go, we've got an update in our data. So this app, you know, it's not the most complicated app, but it is exactly what you need, it's an app from your data. We've got over here the ability to search our data, so you know, we can search by different columns, we can add filtering to it, we can create new records, we can edit data, we can delete data. So they've given us a complete working app at this point to work with that data, making it a true app. Like you could literally publish this one and then share it off with Jocelyn right now and she could just start using my app, right? There's no, no, no extra work required. And she would get all the AI capabilities of Copilot for apps. Now in my last one minute before David yanks the, the cane on me here, um, up here in the top right, this Copilot up here, this is the third one. So this one is also for us makers. This is where you can start to get help, right? This is back to it being a tool to help you. So how do I use patch? 
do to do do. It's going out. It's analyzing the docs and some other data. And here in a second, it is going to spit out. Look at this, a answer on how to use the patch function in Power Apps. So I've got that, you know. What if I want to add today's date to my app? And it should spit out a uh, the today function along with the uh, the text rip wrapped around it. Let's see, did it do it? Oh, so it did, but um, but it didn't do the other part, right? So how can I show the long date? And so and once again, I asked the same question this morning. I got a completely different answer. I mean, I got the right answer, but I got a different one. And so here now it's saying, hey, take that uh, format you did earlier, use the text function, and then use the date format long date. So Copilot, um, I don't even know what to call this one yet. Copilot for Makers Part 2? I don't know. But this Copilot is um, able to help me analyze my data, get better questions, you know, ask questions, help me write formulas and that type of stuff. And I and I think this is really profound. Like I, I asked it earlier, how do I add filtering to my app? And it talked about adding a drop down and a collection and the filter function, you know. And a lot of times you ask these questions, they might not be the exact answer you want, but if you knew nothing about filtering your data, you're a lot further along than you were before. All right, I'm getting the stink eye. David, I know you haven't talked in a while. You don't have your sound effects. I don't know what to do with myself. Beep boop pop. Much better. Yep. Awesome. Thank you, Shane. Very, very excellent discussion on Copilot, its useful features, why we should not be afraid of it. So really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day here to meet with us and share this with the community. We take back over the screen share and we can wrap up this show. All right, everybody. Well, thank you again, Keith and Shane, for taking time out to show us and share with us the information that you have so lovely put together. There are some resources for everyone. Now, the first of all of which is our community call conversations. So this has been a couple of fantastic demos, and you may want to continue that conversation with Shane or Keith, and we want you to be able to. So we have started our community calls conversations. These are dedicated forum threads within the Power Users site and platform. You can scan that QR code. You can go to that URL. I'll put them in the chat, and you can continue the conversation. Reach out to Shane or Keith, ask them questions. Even just let them know you appreciated them taking time out of their day. All feedback is welcome. Just keep it positive. Especially, we love to see that positive thank you feedback. We've got additional opportunities and resources. Our front door, along with Power Platform videos, samples, dedicated community sites for Power Apps, Power Automate, Power Pages, Power Virtual Agents. So definitely take advantage of those. We have more community calls available for you to continue to learn and collaborate with one another. We are a global community. The sun never sets on our community. So you can use these as your meeting spaces for all of those who are passionate about the technology that we use every single day. Our Tuesday calls is the Microsoft 365 and Power Platform call. Those are Microsoft speakers only. So it's a great opportunity to get it directly from the mothership and you can collaborate and work with those that are building the products that we use. We also have the Microsoft Identity Platform, Office Add-ins, of course, the monthly Power Platform that you are in now, and the two sibling Microsoft 365 and Power Platform development happening next week, and the Viva Connections and SharePoint Framework, bi-weekly calls every Thursday, 7 a.m. You can download all of the invites for these at ak.ms slash community slash calls. Now, we'd love to know what you think of these calls. We wanna get some feedback from you about areas that you love, areas that you'd love to see more of, areas that you think we could improve, we would love to hear from you. You can do that at ak.ms slash community slash call slash feedback. Please do fill this in. We implore all of you to please fill it in because we wanna let our leadership know how much you enjoy these calls and opportunities to support you in ways that they can provide us the opportunity to do that in. So please don't hesitate to fill in this form and feedback. We will put it in the chat for you to take advantage of. Uh, but we'd love to hear from you. Even if it's things you love, we just want to hear what's working so that we can do more of that. Thank you again for everyone tuning in. Thank you to our presenters. Woo! Good job, Keith.
pull out the uh, stream deck for the next one. Uh, recording will be available soon on the Microsoft 365 YouTube channel. You can access that at ak.ms slash community slash videos. This will take you to all of our YouTube accounts. Subscribe because if you're not in Microsoft, you're going to see that the video is available for download and it's not. So definitely check it out there. Usually it's available within 24 hours. You can also be alerted to that by subscribing or follow us on Twitter at Microsoft 365 Dev at M365PNP. Our next call, May 17th, 2023, same bad time, same bad channel, 8 a.m. Pacific. You can get to that by going to ak.ms slash power platform community call. And of course, see all our other calls at ak.ms slash power platform slash community dash calls. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your week and a great weekend.